This is the essence of Chris Potter's solos. Here you have both syncopation and groupings of rhythmic displacement. Everywhere where Joe Henderson plays, he uses great rhythm and syncopation. This is on Recorder May. Joe Henderson and Chris Potter has a lot in common, but one of the things are amazing rhythm. Uh, to do a week with his big band at the Blue Note, and, and I was lucky enough to be on the end of the saxophone section here. He was standing right, right next to me. So that, I mean, that's like the best saxophone lesson I ever got. I think that Chris Potter and Joe Henderson are some of the best examples of how to use extremely nice rhythm in your solos. But to understand this, you really need to work on rhythm and see how you grow when you're working on this. Let's use their examples and dig into rhythm. Chris Potter's use of syncopation is just wild. Both the inside of rhythm and his execution of the articulation is out of this world. I think the goal to achieve when you're playing rhythm is to be free, that both the upbeat and the downbeat are completely natural for you to start with. Like when you're practicing your scales, mostly we're just playing up and down the scale like this. How about changing the rhythm? Why not make this the new normal, that this is as normal as just playing the scale up and down in 8 notes? We'll get right back to Joe Henderson in just a bit. The essence of syncopated rhythms are playing over the downbeats. And what I just mentioned is that we need to practice that the upbeats are as natural to start on and stop on as the downbeats are for us. And I suggest that you in the beginning train this with a metronome. You really want your rhythm to be tight and the metronome gives this nice click which makes you able to steer very well. And the metronome gives you a clear reference to the downbeats. <laughs> to gain the confidence in rhythm we really need to play the syncopation with great articulation like Chris Potter, like Joe Henderson, that you drive the rhythm towards the beats and the offbeats. And at the same time, clearly articulate any rhythm. Try playing your scales using syncopated rhythms. In the lesson manual on Patreon, I have added a lot of these great syncopated scale exercises. Links is in the description. When you listen to Joe Henderson on Recorder May, you hear his great articulation too. When adding this articulation, the sentence makes much more sense. The syncopation is clear and very emphasized. When you look at this line, you probably see that Joe Henderson has this begin phrase and he's repeating that phrase, playing small groupings in the bars. Try working with small melodic lines like small groupings in the bars. Start out with a scale. <laughs> This small scale line seems really easy to play, but it's quite challenging. You're not only playing just up and down the scale, but you're actually adding pieces of melody. And this melody is in groupings of three. You see the three eight notes. When you add melody, you spread your focus broader. You have rhythm, you have the timing, and now you have melody too. Another challenge with playing with groupings is adding the metronome on one and three instead of all four beats. When playing with less metronome beats in the bar, you force yourself into having a stronger timing, holding on to the timing by yourself. By doing this, you must trust your own articulation and phrasing to get the syncopation clearly out. When you have started on this, keep developing, keep making new lines in the scale. The small melody in this line can be described as one step up and one skip down. And now I'm playing in groupings of six. When you start extensively working on these small melodic lines, you become more focused on the melody and less on the rhythm. You need to stay focused on the rhythm. So please do this trick for yourself. <laughs> In the line you're playing, mark where the downbeats are falling compared to the melodic line you're playing. Try integrating the sound of the beat in the metronome into the line you're playing, so this becomes one thing. And when your rhythm field becomes strong enough, try removing some of the metronome beats. Here's the metronome on one and three only. Having the metronome marking less beats make your timing even stronger. Start developing the concept, don't only play lines that repeat themselves, but play lines that makes melodic sense to you. <laughs> So 
these small melodies I try to repeat them but only for two bars at a time. This makes me able to feel the two bar phrase. Still playing two groupings of three and then an ending. Keeping the lines within two bars makes it at this moment easier to understand and easier to repeat. <laughs> expanding the line into four bars of repeating patterns. And then you're saying, well, we went from two bars, why not three? Because four bars is easier. The three bar pattern is repeating. And on the fourth bar, you start the new three bar pattern. Because the groupings of three repeating pattern repeats into that first bar on the one, then you exactly know what to aim for. And this is again why it's super important to know exactly where you are in the beat. Get the orientations on the downbeats right. When you get used to this, later you will automatically hear this and integrate this in your plane. Taking the next steps, moving the lines into chord schemes. I've moved this line into a 2-5-1 in C major, D minor, G7, C. When adding these melodic groupings into chord schemes, you really need to know where you are in the bar because you need to aim for the right chord. Try start getting used to the syncopation, getting used to playing the off beats. Get used to end on the off beats too that you get the syncopation feeling. When I compose these lines, the first thing I think is do not play the downbeat. <laughs> I think I might have a line like this in my head when I start. <laughs> Plain rows of eight notes. And then the magic begins. I start deleting notes and adding different rhythms. You remember the groupings of three divided into two bar periods. <laughs> Try doing this but add it over the chord progression. It's easier to make a shorter line over the two bar period only. What's important here is aiming for the target notes in the new bar hitting those chords. When you look closely into this line, you see that I'm only using chord notes the whole way. In the beginning, it's great to play really clear lines sticking to the chord notes and the target notes only, because the groupings itself makes it difficult enough to hear the progression in your playing. And of course, you need to extend the lines. <laughs> easily add scale runs too, but get the chord notes first, then add the scale runs. I really do not believe that it's about the notes. The rhythm is the most important thing. When you want to dig further into rhythm and rhythmic groovings, I really advise you to go to my Patreon and download the lesson manual of this week. All lines and exercises plus a bunch more is in there in all 12 keys to get you an easy start in the key you want. The link is in the description. I do advise you to check out this video with Chris Potter and his amazing rhythmic concept. Play music. Have fun.